Jesus is our savior. He's someone that watches over us when we need him. Some guy that rose from the dead. He's forgotten now these days, you know? I mean, Jesus is just like, you know, just something that your parents tell you about. But Jesus is somebody like, you know, I look up to for advice and everything. And, like, I go to church sometimes, like here and there. And, like, if I'm like, if I'm stuck, like wondering like, what I'm gonna do, or whatever. Sometimes I could ask him like, what's a good idea, or whatever. You know, he's not gonna talk back, or whatever. But I know he's listening and everything. He's God's son. Um, he, he died, and then three days later, he rose from the dead for our sins. And um, he lived in Jerusalem. His life showed us how we should be in order to be happy. So can you list any words that, would you, that you would use to describe him? Uh, love and heaven. Kind, caring, um, hopefully existing. A protector. The man. Jesus is uh, the Lord and Savior. Savior and yeah, like a relief knowing that somebody's always there for you even when you can't see him but he can hear you. Who is Jesus Christ? What is significant for us about his life? According to a 2006 Newsweek poll published in the article From Jesus to Christ by John Meacham, 82% of Americans believe that Jesus was God or the Son of God. 79% believe Jesus Christ was born of the Virgin Mary. And 78% believe that Jesus rose from the dead. Christians make up the world's largest faith group with two billion believers, roughly 33% of the Earth's population. For those of us who believe, what is our actual experience with Jesus? How is Jesus present to us today in the 21st century? That's what we'll be talking about today, experiencing Jesus. Hi everyone, I'm Jack. And I'm Catherine. And, and this, this is, is Real Faith, Faith TV. TV. Our spotlight guest Colin will share with us his profound encounter with Christ. This encounter came after a life experience which briefly had him questioning the existence of Jesus. We'll meet him later in the show along with our studio guests. But first, let's hear from the teens on the street again and find out where they see the presence of Jesus in the world today. Where do you see Jesus' presence in the world today? Uh, TV, church, um, on the crosses, people wearing necklaces, anywhere. Everywhere, pretty much. Well, I've seen, like, you know, at the church, people going in, like, talking to, like, trying to talk out their thoughts and their problems and everything. It's so hard to see, you know, his presence right now with all the drama going on over in, like, the Middle East, you know, um, Israel, Iraq, Sudan. You really see him, like, you know, when, with those guys in 9-11, you know, who, like, help, you know, sacrifice their own life to help for others, you know, that's where you see Jesus. I see him as a guide to try and help us all, even though we may be misguided sometimes. We have no photographs of Jesus of Nazareth. He never posed for a portrait during his earthly life. None of the Gospels, nor any other writing from the first century of Christianity, give us a physical description of Jesus. Yet we all somehow know what Jesus looks like. His face is the most recognizable in America today. Moreover, we think we know who Jesus is, but do we? Let's meet our studio guests and find out what they know about Jesus. They are Jessica. John, Matt, Marissa, Vince, and Katie. So who is Jesus and how has your knowledge of him grown as you have grown? I remember when I was a little kid, I used to think of Jesus as just someone who I'd worship at church and think of him as the most nice person in the world, in the whole wide world when I was little. But um, now that I've grown up, I realize he was much more than that and he was more of like an accepting person who forgave like everybody around him. And he just, he's grown into such a big part of my life now. Well, for me, Jesus started out as kind of like, like a principal type figure. Like he was always in charge, but you never really got to see him or anything. But as I got older, he grew into more of like my friend and like my strongest supporter, like someone I could always turn to. I always thought of Jesus as like the little baby in the, the nativity scene, but when I got older, I realized he's our Messiah, he's our savior, and he's here to take away our sin, and, and when he comes back, we'll be all accepted into heaven, like that, like that kind yeah, of thing. But mine, you know, it was just like, oh, he's the little baby. That's so cute, but now I've realized more. So. Yeah, I definitely, like, I had kind of the same thing where I'd think of him as in the nativity when I was a baby. As, as I got older, it moved from, like, 
the beginning of his life, you know, towards the suffering and death and resurrection, you know, it was kind of my focus of on his life changed, you know, from you know, his birth to what he did for us and like how he died for our sins and stuff. I know for me, I always thought of Jesus as that like storybook character that they always used to paint and he always looked the same and he was surrounded by the children. But as I got older, he became more and more real to me um, in the fact like through the Eucharist and just like his willingness to accept everybody no matter what you do. Absolutely. I know I always, well not always, but as I've grown up, I really focus on what Jesus did physically. You know, he's everything I kind of aspire to be in, this, in a social sense. You know, we, we read about him eating with tax collectors and empathizing with the people that society did not want anything to do with. And I just know, you know, if I'm at school and I don't feel like talking to someone because they might be different than me, those are the moments where I really like focus on Christ. Let's meet our spotlight guest, Colin, and see how he describes Jesus and where he sees Jesus in the world today. Words that I would describe Jesus with would probably be like Savior, Messiah, um, like brother, friends, um, probably light too. Because I, like, I strongly believe he's like a, like a strong light in this like, world when it could be really dark and depressing. I mean, he's someone I could really talk to. Essentially what I know about Jesus is his selflessness, um, his caring, like the miracles he performs. And like, in a world like this, it's, it's almost impossible to like conceive it uh, that someone would die I mean for you because he loves you so much and it just brings this like warmth into your body like you want to come closer to him you want to know him you want to talk to him it's this unconditional love that it's basically what this world's missing in the world uh, essentially he's pretty much like the story that doesn't make it on the news of um, like a kind person that helps someone else and like you know you, like in the news you always hear about uh, there's some shooting went on, or like some bomb went off in Iraq or something. And Jesus is that like that backstory of some act of kindness that happened and people didn't report about. Sometimes you'll have that, those type of days where it's just, like nothing's going right. Um, you get into like a fight with your parents. Um, you have like college stress of, oh, am I going to do the right college? Um, what am I going to do when I grow up? Stuff like that. And I have like problems with friends, um, like the girlfriend. And sometimes you'll forget. Uh, about that presence, but it's still there, and it's still there when you like need to turn to it. And, like all else is lost. It's, I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty nice to think about that Jesus is always there. So, where do you guys see Jesus's presence in the world and your life? I see Jesus in like everything, because just like whenever someone shows that little bit of extra, or they take the initiative to help somebody out. Even like when you wake up and you just see the sun shining, or like when the sun comes through after a storm. Yeah, I see Jesus in my family. My grandmother is a minister. She has a master's in theology. So all my life, I've basically been, you know, fed religion, and that is a good thing for me. And also all my life, I've been going to Catholic schools, and that has helped me to realize what I want to do with my life. And uh, just recently at um, Trent Catholic Academy, we performed the play Godspell. During that time, myself, along with some of the other members of the Gatson crew, we spoke to each other and we were saying that that play, that relationship with God helped us to become so much better in our life and we just felt that that is just so great for us. I know for me, I try to always see Jesus in the Eucharist because John Paul II talked about, you know, the Eucharist is such an important thing to focus on. So whenever I go to adoration, I can just feel that presence there and I can really feel Jesus in there. I see Jesus in like people, and not just people, but people doing good things. You know, if I go do lunch break or something, you know, the people who run that, or even like the people who are benefiting from it, you know, I kind of just see Jesus and all that. And when you see on the news, you know, people doing charitable works, that, that to me, that's where Christ is in the world, you know, in those moments of goodness. Yeah, I see Jesus in a lot of different people too, but for me, it's like, when I see somebody on the street that I'll smile at and if they will actually like take the time and smile back and just say something like, oh, how's your day or whatever, that's when I really see Jesus. Colin spoke about Jesus being his friend as well as his savior, someone to talk to. Someone to turn to when you experience problems or difficulties in life. How many of us have that kind of an intimate relationship with Jesus? We asked the teens on the street to describe their relationship with Jesus. Let's check it out. 
Can you describe your relationship with Jesus if you have one? It's good. He, he guides me through things when I need him and he watches over me. I think that I have a fair relationship with him because uh, it's not really good not to go to church. I don't go to church, but I always feel like he's there and when I need something, even though there's nobody there, I kind of talk to him. So, Is his presence real to you? I would say, you know, even though I haven't been to church and all and stuff like that, yeah. Of course, every day. I think of him in some sort of way. I, don't know, I really don't talk to him anymore now, though. We haven't talked in a while, let's put it like that. He's there to guide you, but he's only there for so much, you know. You kind of got to make your own decisions and abide by what you hope to be true. I'm going away to boot camp in about two, two weeks, going away for the Army. That helps a lot through that. I think he's watching me all the time. I think when I'm happy, it's because of him. And when I'm upset, it was meant to be like that. A couple of the teens on the street said that they haven't talked to Jesus in a while. I think that it's pretty common for people to lose touch with Jesus at times in their lives. I agree. I think it's difficult in today's world to stay close to him because of all the distractions we face in society. But that makes it even more important for us to turn to Jesus and ask him to help us through our teen years and all the decisions we have to make. Can you describe your relationship with Jesus and how you experience him? And also, if there was ever a time in your life when you lost touch with Jesus. Well, I had a really powerful experience with Jesus when I was at um, my youth group retreat. And there's this pyramid in the backyard of the retreat house. And a lot of us were standing near it. And we could completely feel his power. And because it was just so, it, we were meditating. So it was really powerful. And another thing was when we had this maze um, that was just lights. And if, when you were meditating, going through it, you can completely feel his power. And it's just so nice when you like completely put yourself out there that you can feel, feel him with you. Yeah. Well, I know. Uh, go ahead. Oh, thank you. Uh, actually, um, uh, some friends of mine and uh, our campus minister at my school were asked to do the eighth grade retreat. And before we actually did the retreat, we got together and shared our faith with the, uh, each other. And the thing is, I myself didn't have a story with like a tragic death or a big event that happened and all of my other friends there did and the thing is when they shared their faith with me I felt God's presence there you know comforting me as well as comforting them I felt it in the room and I just knew that Jesus and God were there I like at the beginning of the year I went through like some rough times with school and friends and stuff and I didn't have as much faith as like I had, I had had before that and kind of fell away a little bit. But then um, I went with my youth group to the National Catholic Youth Conference, which, you know, it was like thousands of Catholic teens from all over the country came and gathered in like this stadium where the Atlanta Falcons play and everything. And it was kind of, it was, um, you know, we had this huge mass and all these ceremonies and everything and like the speeches that they told and everything, it really just brought me back in touch with Jesus and everything. I really like felt the power of all this faith coming together and everything. Yeah. Colin lost touch with Jesus for a period of time and even questioned his existence when he went through a difficult time in his life. Let's hear his story now. First, we actually had the death of my grandmother who I was really close to. Um, and that was basically the first death in the whole family that I experienced. And it was sort of new to me, and I, I coped with it pretty well. But then when my cousin died, who was actually 21 years old, he died from diabetes, died in his sleep, completely unexpected. He was a really great friend of mine. That, began to, that really shook my faith, and I began to get this like, existential like, absurdity, like, like, like life is meaningless because we just, we just die unexpectedly. And there's no God, there's no Jesus. And then when my best friend died unexpectedly, that that's when I hit complete rock bottom because it, it didn't strike me that he died. And I just went upstairs with my friends and we smoked pot. And the second my dad walked in, like let me tell you, that was, like I turned white. And it finally hit me like, what am I doing? Blind in bed, I couldn't sleep because it finally hit me after that that my friend died. So the next like eight months, I was in complete rock bottom state. I remember running at the track like 9 p.m. and it was really cold, pitch black on the track, no lights, and just running. And I had no idea why I was there. I, for some reason, I just got the urge to go running. I just remember like stopping all of a sudden, just like, like crying out to Jesus, crying out to God. And like looking up to the stars, like 
because I, 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 like, I, it finally hit me that, like, this feeling that I was missing, this feeling that I craved, this, like, emptiness that brought me to rock bottom, uh, was because I, like, turned away from my faith, I turned away from prayer, I turned away from God and Jesus. And it finally hit me that, all right, I need to do something about this. And that brought me to retreat. And in, in retreat, just sitting there, I looked at, it must have been like 15 other kids my age praying, and some of them were, uh, some of them were actually crying themselves. And that sort of just broke down all these barriers in my head, these, these, like, these chains I put in my head that kept me from coming close to God. Beginning to see the little bit of the light and a little bit of this warmth, I just broke down all those barriers and just climbed out of the well. And it was, like I said earlier, it was just, it was an experience that I'll never forget. Martin of Tours was a soldier in the Roman army. One frigid night while he was out on patrol, he came across a beggar wearing only a few articles of clothing to protect him from the elements. Martin cut his cloak down the center and gave half to the man. That night, he had a dream in which he saw Christ wearing the half of the cloak that he gave to the beggar. Martin had a very real experience of Christ through the poor man that he met that night. He was so dramatically affected by this that shortly thereafter, Martin converted to Christianity. He dedicated his life to following Christ. Eventually, he became a great bishop and later was recognized as a saint. Can any of you guys share an encounter that you had with Christ like Colin or Martin of Tours? One time I was like, we do this um, service trip for our school and I went to the little kids college and you know, you kind of just like buddy up with people and like they're maybe three or four years old and they don't have a lot and just to see them as happy as they are and stuff, it, it was really almost life changing because you have to, it really makes you look at what you have and what everyone else does and I think I definitely saw Jesus in them because they were so happy even though they didn't have as much as everyone else. Yeah, I also saw Christ on a mission trip experience with my school. I had gone down to Camden and I was volunteering in a day shelter for the homeless. And there was this guy there and he's a cross dresser and like, let's just say there's a whole history. And it just really hit me. It was like so much in his life has gone wrong and like so much bad things are happening to him and he's still giving to others. I think this is what like Jesus is trying to tell me to do. And it just goes to show that you really do see Jesus in like the most unexpected places. This year I went on a retreat um, for the seniors at my school, but I went as a junior to like help do it when I'm a senior. And while I was there, I was really kind of alone because I wasn't good friends with too many of them or anything like that. But we did this one um, activity this one night and the head campus minister was just talking about this, her relationship with her mother. And all of a sudden, I just felt like so many things falling into my head and we did this um, activity with sand and it was dark and I really, I felt God so much because I have like a rough relationship with my mom and all of a sudden it like so much made sense. I knew why I was there, I knew what, exactly what I was supposed to walk away with from it and it really was absolutely overpowering. We all experience Jesus in different ways. Next we ask the teens on the street how they think others experience Jesus and how it might be different from them. Let's check it out. How do you think that other people experience Jesus? Other people experience Jesus, I don't know, I mean like you know, you look around here, you know, nobody's really, you know, about Jesus. Everybody's, you know, about partying, you know, having fun at seaside, you know, everybody's not really, you know, looking up to Jesus. The only real people who do that are people who go to church, like, regularly. They think about him, and, like, some people are really into, like, the Bible and, like, church and everything. They're, like, I think he's, like, like he's, like, always with them, and, like, he's always going to, like, answer their prayers and everything, but, you know, there's a lot of people out there. You can't answer everybody's prayers, you know? A couple of friends of mine, well, not friends anymore, but friends of mine that take it to an extreme to where, you know, Jesus is with me, so when I do this, when I do this wrong, I ask for forgiveness and it's, everything's all better. But, you know, I think there's extremes. Where I, like, hang out and, like, chill out and, like, go to school and everything, like, people really don't, like, even, like, seem to think he's there or, like, even, like, judge him or whatever. They just go on with their life, like, he's not even there. I think that people have the wrong thought about it. I think that some people don't believe because they think that he's supposed to be there to fix everything, but it's not the way it's supposed to go. So some people just don't believe because they think that everything is supposed to be happy and joyful all the time, and that's just not how life is. 
her comment made me think of that story about when Jesus is, or the man is walking on the beach and the footsteps in the sand and how you get to the end and the man's like, hey, why is there only one set of footprints when I was having hard times in my life? And then Jesus said, oh, it was because I was carrying you. You know, we're always going to have struggles, but he is there. That, that's what you have to remember. So how do you guys think that others experience Jesus and how would you like to experience Jesus in a, in a deeper way? Well, I've never really had like this hardcore experience, like nothing ginormous where I actually have like, you know, been... Overwhelmed? <laughs> yes, yes. Like with spiritual being or like the divine. And I would just like to have a more intimate relationship and just be totally confident and know what's going on. Going to like a public high school, it's hard to open up to a lot of people about your faith and I'm going to be going to a Catholic college and I'm really excited because it seems so open and everyone seems so friendly and I can finally like just be okay with being Catholic and like instead of hiding it, I don't say hide it, but like people will understand where I'm coming from and I think if there's other people around me who believe in the same thing, it'll bring me to have um, a deeper relationship with him. Prayer is an excellent way to communicate with Jesus. There are so many ways to pray. Each of us can find a method that fits our own personal style or preference. Next, Colin tells us how prayer helps draw him even closer in his experience with Jesus. Who knows like, what like, other people our age are going through, like with drugs or sex, um, like pressures with school. Prayer definitely helps me understand and come closer to Jesus. The self-meditating, um, like meditating really quietly, like a quiet prayer. I begin to like, just get into my like, mind and look at what's been keeping me from Jesus, uh, like stresses from parents, um, college stress. Like this year, senior year has been really tough for picking what college I wanted to go to. And I've spent a lot of days just being really reluctant to um, praying and stuff. And after my cousin and friend died, I didn't pray for, no, oh, it must have been seven, eight months. And it was probably the hardest times of my life because I had no answers, like, I was just like left in the dark and I was really depressed and I was just moping around, I sat in my room all day. Um, I lost like interest in school and sports and by praying again at retreat it just opened the door again and like I can't, like for people that are really reluctant to turning to Jesus, it's just, all you have to do is just pray and like, go to church, you need to maybe like even meditate. Uh, when like your mind is running too quickly with different experiences and ideas, you just need to you know, turn off the music, turn off the TV, maybe like lie in bed or just sit in a chair and just have everything quiet and just like listen because I mean Jesus is there. I mean I think like the main roots of all like the immoral uh, things that happened throughout high school, like drugs and whatnot, and uh, growing farther away from Jesus is from the whole popularity part of high school and let me just say this that high school popularity means absolutely nothing like I cannot emphasize that anymore it means nothing in the world in the work world in the, the world outside this country that where people are dying from AIDS where people are dying from genocide and once you realize that and you begin to see the light of Jesus um, things are gonna get a lot better have any of you found that prayer helps to draw you closer to Jesus? Well, prayer for me is kind of like um, very casual with Jesus. Like um, when I pray, I start off with like uh, Hail Mary and Our Father. Then I finish it up with just like a personal like, hey, how you doing? Um, I just want you to, you know, it's kind of like I want to give a shout out. It's, um, <laughs> I said like, you know, watch over my mom, watch over my whole family, watch over my friends. And um, that has brought me really closer to Jesus because it's like almost like we're talking as we're friends. And it's like we're just, we're just there and we're connecting. I, I enjoy, you know, helping other people with their faith, so therefore I can be more confident about mine. So therefore, that's my version of prayer, by helping others. Well, for me, I had surgery last year, and just at first I was freaking out about everything because I, like, I never thought I'd be able to get through it. And I started praying a lot more often, and Jesus just, like, gave me like peace of mind and also gave me the strength to go through with it and remain strong because like if I was strong then everyone else would help me through it. So there's this type of prayer 
called Benedictine Meditation, where you know you read a passage from the Bible, then you think about it, and then you, you meditate on the passage, and then you go into contemplation, where you kind of sit there and try not to think about anything, and kind of let Jesus meet you halfway, let Jesus come to you. And, and to me, that, that brings me a lot closer to him, because I open myself up to him, and kind of, you know, whatever he wants to throw at me and tell me, you know, I'm there. So. When Jesus asked Peter, who do you say that I am? Peter professed that Jesus was the Messiah, the chosen one of God. St. Peter had many experiences of Christ. He spent his life telling others about them. He eventually was killed for proclaiming the good news of Jesus. The words he spoke so long ago still stand as a witness and challenge for us in the 21st century. We worship a living God who interacts with humanity. We have very real experiences of Christ that we are called to share with others. When we talk about Jesus, we are not talking about an abstract idea of God. But of a living person with whom we have a growing relationship. This is something that St. Peter knew. This is something that St. Martin learned. And this is something we are called to discover for ourselves and to live out. How do you experience Jesus? We want to know. Contact us through our website. The address is www.realfaithtv.com. Or you can call us at 609-406-7402. And here's one final thought. In the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus tells us, Whenever we help someone who is in need, we are in fact encountering the living Christ. We read in the Catechism, Christ enables us to live in Him all that He Himself lived, and He lives in us. Jesus is within every human being, and paradoxically, the better we become at recognizing Christ in others, the easier it is for others to see Christ in us. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Real, Real Faith, Faith TV. TV. God bless.